everyone and welcome to days 22 and 23 of our RV10 build. On these days we continue to work on the horizontal stabilizer. So a little bit of bad news, sadly I somehow lost a lot of the footage from day 22. I'm not sure what happened but all I have is this bit here showing us uh, deburring the stringers and the spar caps. I don't have any of the match drilling uh, or aligning the little mark there with the 33rd flange hole. So I do apologize for that. But on a little bit of good news on an unrelated side note is that Tyler and I actually started working on the wings this month. So yay, that's really exciting. Um, it's pretty fun to have moved on to a new part of the build, a new kit, and just really pumped about that. I'm hoping to one day get caught up to where uh, our real time build is more lined up with the uh, YouTube time of the build. So hopefully I'll get to that one day. But now let's get back to the build. And so here we are on day 23 and we have all the parts that we've uh, worked on and deburred. And so now we're gonna be doing some match drilling and we're starting with the uh, front spar doubler and the left and right spar attachment brackets. Really quick, that spar doubler there is a perfect example about why it's important to make sure that you label all your parts really well because that doubler, um, it is the same it can be aligned onto that spar four different ways. If you're looking at it and they're holding this piece here right in front of you, it can go aligned that way. You could flip it upside down and it would work. You could turn it uh, backwards and it would work, or you could have it backwards and upside down. Each way it would line up. So that's why it's just really important to make sure that you mark everything so you know exactly which way to get it in there. With the uh, spar attachment brackets, if you remember, we had to drill and mark a little hole that's on there on a particular spot. And so now you're gonna Clico the spar brackets through that little hole to the doubler and the web. And now you have to clamp uh, something to the bottom that's going to hold them level with each other so they're not all askew. And so we used uh, the big steel angle that was, um, lent to us by our tech advisor from our EAA chapter that we used in a previous video uh, when we were back riveting the trailing edge for the rudder. And this part in and of itself isn't that complicated, but what is kind of weird is that you now have the brackets that are sticking out from the front of the spar, plus whatever it is that you're clamping it to, plus the clamps itself. And so it just makes it a little bit um, bulky and trying to figure out how then to set it up because you can only drill from the back side of the spar. You're match drilling the holes in the spar web into those uh, attachment brackets. And so it just made it a little bit awkward. As you can see here though, we ended up just putting a couple wood blocks there underneath to keep it uh, flat and level and stable while we were drilling. So uh, just, it was just the bulk. It was just kind of weird, but it wasn't uh, nothing too horribly crazy. Um, and it worked, ended up working out just fine. So, and that, that steel angle worked out really nice. You just want something that's gonna make sure to help hold everything really nice and, and level. So you get those, uh, all those eight other holes drilled into those brackets properly. Yeah, that's how we spend our Saturday nights. No, not all of them, but yeah, it was really, it, you know, it's really fun working on this together. So it's a, it's a fun way to spend our time. And yeah, you know, you can still have fun working on the plane on a Saturday night. Anyway, back to, back to the build. So one thing that uh, here, I'm gonna give a little a tip or suggestion to anybody who's new and maybe hasn't been working with the, the counter sinks before, the micro stops. Um, we have the two different micro stops and we have several different um, countersink bits. And normally I can get those out with uh, by hand, but sometimes you know they might get really stuck in there. And so there is a little hole that's in the bit that you can stick something like the punch through to then help you twist it to get it off. It gives you something basically to grab onto since you can't really get you know like your hand in there to, to grab onto the bit. But when it's really stuck, uh, what you can do is 
if you take that that micro stop and put it into your drill we didn't use our nova drill but just like our regular generic household drill and you set it to a low torque and a and you use a low speed and you put it into reverse uh, what you can do then is once you stick that punch through the hole there in the bit slowly you know turn the the drill so it has it spinning backwards and so what happens is the punch that's going through the bit will hit the edge of the skirt that is around uh on the there around the the micro stop and the shank though will keep spinning and so basically instead of unscrewing the bit from the shank you're kind of unscrewing the shank from the bit because it's still turning and the the bit isn't anyway it's just a really easy way to to get it off uh, if you have one that happens to be stuck easy peasy uh, again just low torque low speed and put it in reverse because that's that's the key you don't want it in forward you want it in reverse so you can un undo it and so we'd missed a step earlier it turns out on day 22 when we were uh, match drilling onto the the spars we had drilled all the holes through the spar web, but had somehow missed drilling the holes uh, through the flanges of the spar into the flanges there of the spar caps. So got those all uh, clecoed in through the holes there in the web and then used our cleco clamps to really make sure to hold it up nice and flush and tight there against the, uh, the flanges of the spar. Uh, easy peasy, it wasn't a, a big mistake. Fortunately, it was just a, had missed a step but realized it when we got to the part here on the instructions where it says final drill these holes it's like final drill <laughs> when did we initial drill <laughs> we need to go back and look at it so uh, mistake that should have been avoided but it wasn't at least a, a crisis so easy to solve and that brings us to the end of days 22 and 23 thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please be sure to give me a thumbs up and for more videos like this to follow along as we build our rv10 or for videos about oshkosh be sure to subscribe to my channel and make sure to hit that little bell icon so you get notified anytime i post a new video feel free to leave me a comment down below or if you'd like to reach out privately you can do so through plainlady.com i always enjoy hearing from other builders or potential builders out there